Welcome back everyone. We're going to mount a flying pheasant for you today. Lots of notes, lots of details and lots of tutorials in this series of uh, videos I have actually planned out for you guys. So anyway, we're going to start with carving the neck. As you can see, I like to carve the neck out of the thicker foam so I can carve it down to the shape and measurement that I want. And for flying pheasant, it is easier if you have your neck instead of a straight um, basically neck like in terms of the thickness it helps it helps a lot more if you carve it out a little bit thicker on one end and then the, um, with the neck measurements and the uh, thickness of the neck on one end and the side that is going to get attached to the body I like to make it a little bit wider because it creates with uh, with the transition of the body to to the neck so it's like where the crop area sits and whatnot so you will see what I'm going to do right now and uh, the way I'm going to fit it into the body it makes a way nicer transition So these foams are called backer rod, I've mentioned it before, but if this is the first time uh, checking out this video or this channel, these are backer rod foam, you can buy them from construction sites or uh, suppliers, and um, they are fairly good actually, they are quite flexible, yet they have a good density for, for creating a neck, and I like to use my Dremel to basically bring them back to the shape that I need and of course it's going to need a lot of uh, test fitting and uh, back and forth so right now as you can see um, creating the right size gap on the body and uh, where the neck is going to get attached and I'm going to make sure that uh, what I'm carving is going to fit perfectly right into that gap The, um, the head that I'm using on my Dremel tool is um, is just a sandpaper. So, and you gotta be careful if you're gonna use the same tool to carve it out. You gotta be careful because um, if if you if you leave it on the foam, it's just gonna dig into it pretty bad. So you got you just gotta touch it slightly for uh, to basically remove just small layers off of the surface of the foam. So now the fit seems to be the right fit right now where it is, but still the length of the neck is way out of shape and out of size and then we're going to uh, adjust that later. So knowing the pose of the bird in mind helps to create the same angle that we want before we install the neck. If it's going to be tilted down, tilted up, so the cut that we make where the neck is attached to the body it helps with that it takes the pressure off of the wire and off of off of the neck itself so yeah measuring is always the way to go sometimes um, you you forget where to measure from you can measure the whole body from the tail till skull and then you make sure that you got the same length uh, into your into your um, basically mannequin. So now I'm trying to attach this skull, or at least figure out how to attach this skull to the neck because this neck having one side bigger than the other side is not going to go through the the opening of the head through the skin like the normal way we do. So we have to do a little bit of a different uh, way to push it in, into the skin. So I got the skull, I make my holes into the skull, that's how I like to attach my artificial skull to the neck. Make two holes, going right from back of the skull, coming out of the top, and the second hole from the top, going in, but doesn't come out from the other side. So basically when my neck wire goes from the back of the skull into the head with a U shape with a U bend I'll push it back inside the skull 
but before I do that I'm going to clay up the face and install the eyes and everything and then uh, we usually used to attach the neck to the skull and then do up the face and eyes but in this case we're gonna have to do a little bit of a different way so to install your eyes you'd better have the measurements already from the front of the beak to the back of the eyes or the front of the eyes doesn't matter as long as you follow the same measurements on both sides of the face and uh, have the right tilt so the bird is looking forward because in this scenario the the bird is going to be flying so when they're flying usually they're looking forward and uh, also the um, you gotta make sure that the eyes are in the center of the eye socket like in terms of not being up and down so you can easily measure that with um, basically from where the eye is sitting on the clay to, to the top of the skull on both sides it should be the same and also you notice that I use my caliper to see the diff the distance between both eyes and these are all the measurements that you must have taken before when you're skinning the bird so you can apply them back on the mound the distance from the front of the beak to the back of the eyes or the front of the eyes and you put that measurement back in both eyes apply that and also how um, how up and down or, or how, where they're placed uh, are they parallel to the ground and also the eyes got to have the same distance when they're alive comparing to when you're mounting them so you saw that I pushed the neck through the skin from the smaller end of it and now I'm going to attach the skull to the neck yeah you see that my U bend is already there and uh, I'm going to adjust it so by the time I push it in it basically buries itself down into the skull I think the first try I didn't have it right <clears throat> so this secures um, the head to the neck wire a little bit of a crazy glue on top of it and spray activator make sure that it glues really hard and nice and then I still use some hot glue to attach the neck to the back of the skull too so everything is constant and in one piece I really like this um, attachment because it fuses the foam into the plastic uh, skull and or resin skull and it really works really works fine for me now I'm going to use some clay to um, enhance the wattles on the face create the eyelid and everything I wish I would have remembered to keep the camera on the other side so you could see that part too a little bit closer up but um, but I forgot I get carried away one of these days I'm gonna have to hire a cameraman for you guys so you can follow where I'm working otherwise like this is going to be on tripod all the time yeah so there is uh, a little bit of a waddle uh, basically shaped up on uh, on the skull already these are the skull that we purchased from taxidermy supplies again but I like to enhance them make them a little bit bigger depending on how big of a waddle or what season the bird was harvested so this bird was not a wild pheasant was a farm pheasant and but it has really good colors on it so as you can see I'm putting the eyebrow wattle and also uh, the below the eyes wattle I'm making them a little bit larger so by the time I'm I'm pulling the skin over everything is already built Just take your time, use your tools, and uh, go slow. Create what you can 
and what you think is the best and is closest to the natural look. If the wattles on your pheasant are developed and basically the, the bird was harvested during um, the, the mating season, then it allows you to create bigger wattle right now. So th th those wattle, I really like them, uh, but I haven't had the opportunity to work on uh, a bird that has been harvested in mating season because uh, most of them, they don't really have, the ones that I work on, they don't really have a lot of wattles developed already. So I just go with what I have. So now we are pulling the skin over the skull slowly and we're going to always keep a rag inside the skin so it keeps taking the extra moisture out and then we're going to slowly glue that skin around the beak and i use gorilla crazy glue or instant glue or um, whatever they call it you can use any kind of crazy glue all crazy glues are good these days and, uh, but I like Gorilla. I've just one thing I like about Gorilla is is the packaging and the nozzle. It lasts for the whole use of the glue. A lot, a lot of different gl crazy glue or instant glue that I've used, I have to just either tear them up to use the inside again because the nozzle gets plugged. And but um, the way Crazy Glue, uh, sorry, the, the way Gorilla has designed their uh, nozzle, it works great. So I basically go through the entire bottle without damaging. It starts to get really plugged up by the by the time that I'm almost done with the glue. So anyway, that works for me, and I basically squeeze a bunch of them out on a on a jar or a piece of wood or anything like that which you see that I'm using this jar all the time and I'm applying it with a needle and uh, you don't need to use a lot sometimes um, when you use a lot of crazy glue actually they don't work as much as when you apply a little bit it's um, there is there is a specific amount that you need to apply it needs to be sucked into the skin and also when you press it down against the skull it really glues well and you have to come back and check on it because there is always a membrane layer um, on the skin that when you're gluing it you're gluing that only and you think that you're done but you have to come back to it about 10-15 minutes later and and uh, give it a test with your needle start pulling it away and if you see the surface is peeling off it means that you have to glue it again it's not that the glue didn't work, it's that you just glued the inner membrane of the skin that you should have actually removed it before, but you might have missed. I, I miss it sometimes too. It's not a big deal, but you just make sure that when you're gluing it back, come back and check on it. Try to pull it away uh, about 10-15 minutes with your needle. Just push it back, see if the skin is glued hard or not, and if it's not, just apply a little bit more and then you will be set and glue those areas sometimes if you clean the skin 100 percent good that will never happen with the first application of uh, glue the the skin is going to be just bonded to the uh, to the head perfectly good forever so anyway guys this video is coming to an end it was all about installing the head and carving the neck we went uh, mostly with the slower speed so you guys can watch closely and uh, I'm going to leave you to it getting the next video ready to go and uh, you will see the you'll see the whole process by the time we're done with this series of pheasant videos okay thanks for watching we will we'll see you in the next segment